What is up guys and welcome to the first episode of Total Tank, uh, I'm the host AWM uh, from AWM Gaming. Episode 1 is going to be based around the Blood Death Knight in the raid tier of Blackrock Foundry and below. Uh, so yeah, let's just get straight into the defensive cooldowns and abilities. Okay, so the first cooldown we are actually going to look at is a ability called Icebound Fortitude. Now what this does is it f uh, makes the Death Knight freeze his blood to become immune to stun effects and reduce all damage taken by 15% no, 50% sorry for 8 seconds. This is something you mainly want to pop during like heavy damage phases or like as a as a last resort, say if your healers are struggling or anything like that, you want to pop this. It can sa it can actually save your life. I know it seems like a stupid thing, one mo like one little ability can save your life, but it really does. It's a really important one that you need to use throughout more all probably fights in Black Rock Foundry and High Mall and stuff like that. So that is one you'd use in high amounts of pressure and yeah, it'll probably save your raid and probably you because if you go down then it's bit it's wasting a combat res and you might need it for somebody else. Uh the next ability we are gonna look at is actually Bone Shield. Now what this does is it surrounds you with a barrier of whirling bones with 8 charges that reduces all the damage you take by 20%. Each damage attack consumes a charge, it lasts 5 minutes or until all charges are consumed. So basically it's kind of it's kind of like, like an earth shield, if you will, but it doesn't quite heal you, but it, it, re it reduces your damage taken, and that's something you want to keep in mind when you're fighting, you want to try and keep it up as much as possible. Uh, speeding through this really, um, Next one we're going to look at is actually Rune Tap. Uh, it can choose one blood rune to reduce all damage taken by 40% for 3 seconds. So that's something if you've got a big hit coming up and you know it's going to be a big hit, you want to try and pop that just to minimise the damage as much as you can. Help your healers out a lot, a hell of a lot, and keep yourself alive at the same time. So it's all beneficial. And it doesn't have that much of a cooldown. It has two charges as well, so that is always a good one to use. Uh, the next one being anti-magic shield, when I can find it. Uh, anti-magic shell even. Uh, it surrounds the death knight in an anti-magic shell for 5 seconds, absorbing 75% of magical damage and preventing application of harmful magical effects. Damage absorbs generates runic power. So if you want to fight like Korag or anyone like that, or if you can think of anybody else on that kind of category of like being a a magic boss or anything like that, you want to use this quite a lot, especially when you have the aggro and something big's coming in, if there's a big hit coming in, then you really do want to use that if it's to do magic, because 75% is a lot off, and it's a lot less for the healers to do as well. Uh, the next one is one I recommend in the talent tree, which we'll talk about in a minute, is Death Pact, which heals the Death Knight for 50% of his max health and absorb incoming equal to 25% of max health 15 seconds. I use this mainly because in purgatory I think it can actually save you and um, also I've, I find it's more beneficial to have the healer save mana as well and um, it's not like a it's not like a little build up of health over time this is a proper health boost so when you get under a lot of pressure you want to kind of use that and hmm, yeah really just try and make it as easy as possible for yourself but uh, now to go on to our main offensive abilities. Uh, the first two we're going to talk about could actually be applied by Outbreak, which basically instantly applies both Frost Fever and Blood Plague. Uh, frost Fever is basically a disease that deals frost damage every 3 seconds for 30 seconds. To be more precise with it, um, it chills the target for 1621 frost damage and infects them with Frost Fever. And you want to keep that and Plague Strike up as much as possible. In, in fact, you, want, you, you don't want any downtime on it. It's a uh, plague strike, a vicious strike that deals 3,573 damage and infects the target with blood plague. And it's a disease that does the damage every 3 seconds for 30 seconds, just like Icy Touch. And you really do want to keep them two up at all times. Uh, using Blood Boil can, I think, sometimes reset the timer on them. If I'm wrong, please correct me, but that's what I see happening unless that's just for spreading really. Uh, so yeah you want them to up all the time. You want your main ability to be used to generate damage and threat at all times is blood boil. 
which deals 4,250 shadow damage to all enemies within 10 yards and spreads your existing it diseases from your target to all the other enemies hit, refreshing them to full duration also increases the healing from your next death strike by 20 which brings me on to my next um, healing ability slash defensive ab it's, it's a defensive and offensive ability really death strike and what that does is when you stack this with blood boil it will heal for more so the actual description of this ability is focuses dark power into a strike and deals 19k physical damage and heals you for 20,000 um, there's no real rotation or set number for that depending on how geared you are that's how more it will heal you with how hard you hit and stuff but um, there's no real rotation with death knight either it's more of a whatever procs than hit kind of thing death knight's always been that kind of class one ability you do want to keep uh, for, for just below 25% noise soul reaper uh, oh, sorry, below 20%. Uh, strikes an area for 4,973 physical damage and inflicts the target with a soul reaper and increases the healing from your next death strike by 20% after 5 seconds. If the target is below 35% health, this effect will deal 19,000 additional shadow frost damage and if the enemy dies before the effect triggers, the death knight gains 50% haste for 5 seconds, which is rather important as one of our stats is actually well, our third stat could be a mix of three stats. It depends which one you want to, you choose to put first, depending on your playstyle. But um, let's just move on to talents. Now that I've been through the abilities, offensive and defensive, we would most likely be best off going through the talents. Um, <coughs> the first talent, uh, Death Coil and Frost Strike, also infect your target, adding four seconds to the duration of Frost Fever and Blood Plague, and adding an additional stats to Necrotic Plague. I find this beneficial because I like more uptimes on my dots and stuff so I can keep it in the big hits, you know. It's it's definitely more beneficial in the long run. Um, plague Leech consumes your blood plague and frost fever on the target to activate up to two randomly fully depleted runes as death runes. And Unholy Blight surrounding the death knight with a vile swarm of unholy insects for 10 seconds stinging all enemies within 10 yards infecting them with blood plague and frost fever. That would be a good ability to use, but to be fair, I'd l I don't see the point in it if you've already got Blood Boil. And honestly, I think the uh, dots to stay on the target are much more beneficial in the long run. Right, next tier of talent, there's Lich Born. Draw upon Unholy Energy to become undead for 10 seconds, increasing Leech by 10%, making you immune to Charm, Fear, and Sleep. The second one, Anti-Magic Zone, place an Anti-Magic Zone for 3 seconds it reduces spell damage taken by party or rear members by 20%. That's more of something that a DPS could pop, but I think it's more vital that we have this talent purg purgatory. Um, an unholy pact that prevents death when you sustain fatal damage instead of absorbing incoming healing equal to the amount of damage prevented lasting three seconds if any healing absorption remains when this effect expires you will die this effect may only occur may only occur every three minutes so you so it can only save you once every three minutes after that you're on your own basically um, next tier death advance you're passively 10 percent faster and movement impairing effects may not reduce you below 70 percent of normal movement speed when activated you gain 30 percent movement speed and may not be slowed below 100% of normal movement speed for 6 seconds. So that's a decent one if you try to get somewhere in a hurry. Uh, Chillbin. Victims of your frost fever are chilled, reducing movement speed by 50% for 10 seconds, and victims of your chains of ice are immobilized for 3 seconds. In PvE, this kind of doesn't come in handy all that much, whereas I'd much rather have asphyxiate. Uh, lifts an enemy target off the ground and crushes their throat with dark energy, stunning them for 5 seconds, functioning in silence if the target is immune to stuns. So it can silence as well as stun, which is always helpful on mobs that have a mixture of casters and melee. Uh, so the next tier um, is Blood Tap. Every 15 runic power you spend will generate a blood charge, max 12 charges. Blood tap consumes five blood charges and to activate a random fully depleted rune as a death rune. So almost like Plague Leech in a sense. Uh, runic empowerment, when you spend runic power you have 1.50% 
chance per runic power spent to, to activate sorry, a fully depleted rune, which I'd, I'd rather leave it to chance than have something on cooldown because you can get a hell of a lot more out of this than you can in the other ones. And runic corruption, when you spend runic power you have 1.50% chance per runic power spent to increase your rune generation rate by 100% for 3 seconds. That doesn't quite cut the cake for me, but then again, talents are all down to your playstyle and your personal choice. I'm merely just reading you through what the talent choices are. Uh, 75, um, Death Pact. Heals the Death Knight for 50% of it, max health and absorbs incoming healing equal to 25% of max health for 15 seconds, as I've already explained. Death Siphon. Deals 3,552 Shadow Frost damage to an enemy and healing the Death Knight for 400% of damage dealt. Conversion. Converts unit power into health, restoring 2% of maximum health per 1 second. Lasts until cancelled or runic power is exhausted. Gorfiend's Grasp. Shadowy tendrils. Coil around the enemies within 20 yards of a target, hostile or friendly pulling them to the target's location. That, to me, is a... is a... is a mob aggro mechanic which I do kind of like but with two tanks you shouldn't really need to take all the aggro. I prefer Remorseless Ruin there as it like, can come in handy if you're taking high pressure mobs. Um, what Remorseless Winter does is surrounds the Death Knight with a f swirling tempest of frigid air for 8 seconds, chilling enemies within 8 yards of every 1 second. Each pulse reduces target's movement speed by 15% for 3 seconds, stacking up, up to 5 times upon receiving a 5th application. An enemy will be stunned for 6 seconds which is 6 seconds of downtime for that enemy and less damage you have to deal with over time. Or you could go with Desecrated Ground which corrupts the ground in an 8 yard radius beneath the Death Knight for 10 seconds. While standing in this corruption, the Death Knight is immune to roots, snares and effects that cause loss of control. This ability is instantly moved such as effects when activated. So, again that's more of a PvP kind of thing I'd say. And the final tier, by far the hardest choice too, uh, starting with Necroic Plague, a powerful disease that deals 247 Shadow Frost damage per stack every 2 seconds for 30 seconds. Each time it deals damage it gains 1 stack and infection of the nearby enemy within 8 yards if possible. You gain 2 runic power whenever a target is infected with Necroic Plague and attempts to attack you. Replaces Blood Plague and Frost Fever which is applied by any ability which either, which applied either. This effect cannot be refreshed, it gains one stack instead. <laughs> now that is a good talent to have, but then again, I do like my other dots, and I did like, well, I don't know, I think Defile just suits my playstyle a bit more as a Death Knight, as what I'm used to. Um, Defile, Defile's the ground on target by the Death Knight every one, one second, if there's any enemy standing in the Frost, in, in the Defile, it deals 1.9k Shadow Frost damage to them and grows in radius and damage by 2.5%. Enemy standing in your defile deals 10% left damage to you as, uh, as well, so it's kind of a defensive. But it does replace, def replace death and decay, but whenever that can be... <coughs> Sorry, I don't know why my voice is cracking, but whenever that can be applied or put down, it should always be put down because it's it's a good damage dealer and it stops damage like coming to you. The big badass damage dealer though is Breath of Syndergosa which continuously deals 5,900 more Shadow Frost damage every one second to enemies in a corner in front of you within 12 yards and affects them with a mark of Syndergosa for 6 seconds. Deals reduced damage to secondary targets but you will continue breathing until cancelled or root power is exhausted. The mark of Syndergosa causes you to be healed for 10% of spell damage dealt by afflicted enemies. So for damage that, you, that is incoming that you will get back as well. So again, I'm not going to force you to make choices with your talents. It suits your playstyle. You choose what you are comfortable with. But that's the talents out of the way. And let's move on to the stat priorities. Stat priorities for a Blood Death Knight can actually be quite confusing at first. But um, your stat priority is mainly stamina, then bonus armor or just your armor, um, followed by strength, and then versatility, uh, which could be on par with multi-strike, which could also be on par with haste, so whichever one of them three that you choose for the third attribute, it really doesn't matter, 
all that matters is if you have your stamina, your bonus ammo and your strength and the last two stats on your list are actually going to be mastery and crit so so long as you follow this stat rotation and you make sure mastery and crit are last in that order stamina, bonus armor and strength are the first three in that exact order whatever comes between that really doesn't matter but whatever suits your playstyle more is the choice you're probably going to want to go with so if you want to be dealing more damage you want to try and go with multi strike if you want to try and be more avoidant and more of a damage mitigate in tank then you want to go with versatility or if you want to deal more damage and just be quicker in general you want to choose haste so whichever suits your playstyle more is the one that's going to be more beneficial to you in the long run and that is it guys for the first episode of total tank i hope you enjoyed the guide on blood death knight tanks um, glyphs are more of a choice than anything on a death knight to be honest um, whatever suits your playstyle more again is going to be more beneficial to you um, these will be updated every patch so every time a uh, class gets buffed on earth there will always be an update coming from a tank series and I may do a another series on healers and DPS I don't know yet but I'm also planning on doing many other wild videos and hopefully a druid guide next week so if you have enjoyed please leave a thumbs up and a comment and also subscribe to my channel and to uh, MGM WoW and MGN uh, as they are my new sponsors so um, yeah thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day slash evening and I hope you have fun learning to play Death Knight.